So I know that um, the iPad has notes on it. And notes may be more suitable than OneNote, which is a Microsoft product. But I want to say this, and it may be controversial. The Samsung tablets are better than the iPads. I was forced by this society to switch from Android to Apple. I regret it. So I do plan on going back to the classic Samsung tablet. No more Apple. Enough of this. Questions five through nine is specifically on ratios, specifically, specifically on ratios. Excuse me. I am recording this video at 102 in the morning. So let's look at question five. Let's understand what ratios mean. Matter of fact, before I go over question five, let's just go over what a ratio is. A ratio in its basic form is the comparison of two non-zero numbers, A and B, through the operations of division. So ratio could be written as A to B using the colons, A to B using the word to, or as a fraction. But don't confuse this with a probability. It's just comparing the two quantities. Also, don't confuse this for odds, although we're going to be exploring odds later. When it comes to having proportions, that is when you have two ratios that are equal to each other. Hence, meaning each ratio has the same units in the same location. So that means you have two sets of ratios equal to each other. And we're going to assume that B and D are not equal to zero. Because we don't want to work with undefined numbers. And when we're in order for us to determine if the ratios are equivalent, we use what is called cross multiplication such that A times D equals to B times C. A times D equals to B times C. I'm going to be kind of corny, but if you kind of take the, the train on 8th Avenue from 59th Street to 145th, the A and a D run on the express track, the B and a C run on the local track. Is that a coincidence? I don't think so. It is. It's a coincidence. Anyways, number five. A 1.5 package of seedless grapes costs $3.95. So that's going to be the first ratio of 1.5 pounds to $3.95. It wants you to find the unit price for the unit price in dollars per pound. Round your answer to the nearest cent. So let's find that unit price. Let's find the price of grapes for a single pound. So that means we're going to be comparing one pound to X dollars of money, whatever, how much the item costs. The units are pounds to dollars for both ratios. So therefore, we can set it up as proportions. So that's going to be the first ratio of 1.5 over 3.95 and that's going to equal to one pound over x now we can cross multiply 1.5 times x that is 1.5 x and that's equal to the cross product actually i don't want to use that word that means something totally different to the product between 3.95 times 1, so I'll write it down, 3.95 times 1. But we know 3.95 times 1 is just 3.95, so that's great for us. And then to solve for x, we can then do the inverse operation, divide both sides by 1.5. x is approximately 
2.63. This is in terms of money. So we can say the unit price per pound is $2.63. And we answered the question. So let's do number six. Number six says a company has a capacity of 56 patrons. If, sorry, a company, a restaurant has a capacity of 56 patrons. If the restaurant is four sevenths full, how many patrons are at the restaurant? Okay, that's another ratio right there. That's another set of proportions. And this is going to be number six. So this is five. This is six. We can say that our four sevenths fill is equal to X over 56. And the reason we can say that is because once again, go back to the question, the capacity is 56 patrons. So far, we have four sevenths of some number that is filled. So we have to find what is four sevenths of 56. That number will be smaller than 56 because four sevenths is the number between zero and one. So once again, we can set that up as a ratio and cross multiply. So that's seven times X, which equals seven X. And that equals to four times 56. Seven X equals to 224. And then to solve for X, you can divide both sides by 7. And that's going to equal to 32. 32 patrons or patrons. And I'm going to call this way number 1. That's the first way you can do this problem. The second way is you can find four sevenths of 56. Four sevenths of a number means you can multiply the four sevenths to the 56. So four sevenths times 56 over one. And that's gonna equal to 224 over seven when you divide that, that also gives you 32. Hence, the answer is 32 patrons. So two different ways to do the same question. Um, there could be a third way, of course, but you have options when it comes to this. Make sure it's mathematically um, correct. Um, so for number seven, number seven, I'm just going to do it on top. So, and I'm going to write the answer to number seven below, but I'm going to do the work up here. Suppose you want to solve the following problem. A teacher can grade seven essays in two hours. At this rate, how many essays will she be able to grade in five hours? Which of the following proportions will give the correct answer? Okay, so we have seven essays to two hours. So I'm going to compare that to two hours. And then it says at this rate, how many essays can she grade in five hours? So X essays to five hours. Because it's at the same rate, that is equal. So then we can have the proportion of seven to two equals to X to five. So clearly number one is an answer. What else can be a possible answer? Because it says, um, give which of the following. So we can assume that there's more than one answer. I am going to now reverse the plot because I can reverse the order of my units as long as I'm consistent in both of my ratios. I can also write this as 
two hours to grade seven essays. And I can write that as five hours to grade X number of essays. So now my new proportion is two to seven equals to X to five, or rather five to X. Two to seven equals five to X. That's number four. So the answer to number seven is proportion one and proportion four. So for seven, we're going to say proportion one and proportion four. And there you go. Number eight, we'll do that below. So eight is X, I already forgot, X minus seven over X plus two equals three fifths. And once again, these are two ratios that are equal to each other. That is a set of proportions. So we're gonna cross multiply, but we're gonna be safe. And before we cross multiply, Let's put each of these binomials in parentheses because it is considered one quantity. So we're going to cross multiply. So that's going to be five times the quantity of X minus seven. And that's equal to three times the quantity of X plus three. Let's do some distributive property. Five times X is five X. Five times negative seven is negative 35. Three times X is three X. Three times positive three is positive nine. Once again, we wanna solve for X. Let's keep my variable on the left side. So I'm gonna subtract both sides by three X. I'm going to combine two steps in this case. You can do it one at a time on your own, but I want to save a little bit of time. And then I'm going to move all my constants to the right side. So I'm going to add 35 to both sides. The 35s cancel on the left. The 3x's cancel on the right. 5x minus 3x is 2x. 9 plus 35 is 44. To solve for x, divide both sides by 2. The 2 simplify each other out. x equals 22. And once again, you can always verify to make sure that's correct. I'll show it over here. So 22 minus 7 over 22 plus 3 equals to 3 fifths. Let's see if that works. 22 minus 7 is 15. 22 plus 3 is 25 equals 3 fifths. And the way to double check to make sure it's correct, you can cross multiply. 5 times 15 is 75. 25 times 3 is also 75. The answer 22 works. So I'm going to put here, check and answer. Check and work. And last but not least, we're going to do number nine. And then we'll be done with this video. Number nine says a quality control inspector examined 260 calculators and found seven of them are defected at this same rate. How many defective calculators will there be in a batch of 10,920 calculators? I kind of wish I opened up my calculator app before I made the video. But now we have two ratios. We have number of calculators to defective. So the first ratio is going to be 260 calculators to seven defective. 
So 260 calculators over seven defective. At the same rate, we want to see how many defective calculators we can find when we examine 10,920 calculators. Nine hundred and twenty. So out of the 10,920 calculators that we're going to inspect, X of them have to be defected. Also, I want to say the ratio is number of calculators to defective. I know I skipped steps in this last part, but I kind of went over how to do this for the past four questions. So we're going to cross multiply. 260 times X is 260 X. And that's going to be seven times 10,920. But now I kind of want to double check to make sure the number is correct. Okay, good. For the next video, at least I'll have the calculator open, but I'm going to use another terrible Apple device, which is known as an iPhone that I was pressured into. And we're going to multiply 7 times 10,920. And that equals to, I'll do it in this color, 76,440. And that equals to 260x. And then once again, the solve for X, you're going to divide both sides by 260. 260 simplify each other out. X is equal to, or maybe approximately, well, equal to 294. What does that X represent? That means 294 defective calculators. Speaking of defective, my spelling is defective. Bam. As the kids say, I ate. Speaking of eating, I guess I'm going to eat too. Make sure that you fall. Nothing crazy though, because I don't want you to fall asleep during a study session. And I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys. Make it a girl this time.